Sorry. So 12 straight shutouts. Got one yesterday and we got 11 more in a row. They don't score, we can't lose. Yeah. Gotta make some big plays. Be the All easy. All CIS. All county. Ranking. All that stuff. All the stuff you guys did all the luck downs for. All the sprints. All the farms. That's what it's all about. Pay it in. They're going to pay it with their blood, their sweat. We get to check because we're going to end up more points on the scoreboard. 14 0, baby. You guys have something very special going.
right now, we, I mean, we've got two quarterbacks that are, you know, neck and neck, Faustino Campa and Ulysses Linares. And uh, what we're doing right now, we're going you know, to split time with them through the preseason. And, uh, you know, whoever, you know, wins out there will probably be the starting quarterback. You know, if they come out even, maybe we'll, you know, split them all year. I just think, you know, the one who, who performs the best should be the quarterback and, and should be playing the game. And whoever performs the best should be there. With the question mark still remaining at quarterback, the Argos know they have to depend a lot more on their running game. Well, probably the strongest point are, you know, we got two, our two running backs going back that end up starting at the end of the year, Jason Bruce and Daniel Doe. And then we have Chris Coe, another fullback, who also played a lot last year. Uh, so I think we're going to be able to run the ball a lot better this year than we did last year. Well, this year, as, like as Coach says, you know, we're trying to run the ball more, a little bit more, because we have a good, pretty good running game. And so we're trying to power, you know, pound it in you know, yard by yard. And, um, you know, hopefully to get the wear out to the defensive line and then maybe go a little couple passes, short passes here and there, you know, to keep them on their toes. I think probably our running game would be the strongest point of anything. Our running game, you know, it's improved a lot, and I think we're going to use it more than last year. Last year we tried to pass more because we had the receivers. With Griswold, BJ, and Haller all departed, others know they're going to have to start leading the way. Everybody looked up to those guys, and when they're there, they see them, and they try to prove to them, so they try playing better. And with them gone, <clears throat> we got to step it up now. Us, and we're, we're, we're doing a pretty good job with them, and we're just hoping we can come through. And us seniors that we have left is for us to step it up and, you know, help out the younger players, you know, to experience what it is, how it is on the varsity level. It's only a matter of time now. We'll see if the extra conditioning these guys did pays off. This is the new look for the Vaqueros, but they keep the same successful game plan. Run, 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 run. That's what they do at the ranch, and the Rancho Alamitos Vaqueros do it very well. Hence the nickname Tailback High. In the 90s, the Vaqueros have rushed for over 10,000 yards, and guess what? They are not slowing down. He does have some great breakaway speed, but he's more of a kid that, that will make you pay when he lines up with, if you try to line up with him and take him on. He's a very quick cutter, he can cut on the dime. Just gives him the open, he knows where, he knows where to make the cuts at. He's more of an outside breakaway. Once he gets out there, watch out. I, I, don't, I don't see anybody around here running him down. Alex, more, he's more of a uh, slasher type juker, and then um, if you get him to open again, you can't miss a tackle on him. Slow to the ground, great forward lean, and uh, very powerful. Outstanding runner. I was probably just a um, north-south runner, just trying to get up the field as quick as I can. It's unfortunate that uh, we only have one football to give away per play, but you can guarantee those guys are going to get it as much as possible. You know, offense has been offen offense like uh, every other year. Running, running, running. What about the pass? After three years of John Frank's ability to air it out, Taylor Yandel gets the call. John Frank was a real, a real loss to us because we uh, really needed him. But we also got some guy to step back, you know, Taylor Yandel, he's doing the job real well, so I've got faith in him. Losing John Frank is a hard kid to replace. He was a three-year starter, and so I don't think, I, I don't foresee us throwing the ball as much as we had with John Frank, although Taylor Yandel has, has uh, stepped up this summer and done an outstanding job, and, and we can throw the ball, don't get me wrong, he can throw the ball. He's a big kid, he's a strong arm kid. And uh, he's just a tad inexperienced, although he's played some at, at the uh, lower levels. He's played some quarterback. So we could, we could stick, away, stick with the same, uh, about the same ratio if I wanted to. However, I think uh, putting the ball in Leo's and Alex and David's hands is, is probably the way to go this year. Well, we'll get back to Rancho in just a moment. But first, the rival Garden Grove Argonauts. Yeah, and Garden Grove, uh, they definitely have a few question marks. But one place they do not have question marks is at the running back position. You mentioned the running back situation at Garden Grove, and with Danny Doe and Jason Bruce, the running game should be in fairly uh, good hands. One question mark that the Argonauts are going to have to try to solve right away is what to do at the quarterback spot, and you may see a platoon situation happening at Garden Grove with their quarterbacks. Well, it should be interesting to see how the Argonauts are kind of in a rebuilding phase right now, but Rancho, they just keep doing it. And I know, Jeff, you've faced this Rancho running game in the past. They just keep producing. How do you handle them? 
I tell you, it, it's it, sometimes you just you just hope and pray for the for the best, but they might drop the ball or slip and fall. The thing with Rancho is they are so strong and they are so fast that teams that are going to play Rancho, if their linebackers are slow to react and slow afoot, those teams are going to be in big trouble. You yeah. don't just have sorry, Gordon. You don't just have one running back coming at you. You got Cozy, Vickers, and Blanco. So. Any one of the three can kill you. That's right. You just can't key on a Rancho back because the other two are, they have the potential to make a game-breaking run uh, you know, at any time during the game. And now they have Taylor Yandel who replaces uh, John Frank, who uh, will add to it as well. There's a key, Gordon, right there. If Taylor Yandel can throw the ball and keep the defense honest, that's really going to open up the running game even more, and now teams can't load up with eight and nine guys up front. Look out. Look out for the Vaqueros. All right, guys, I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but we've been doing this every year, too. It's the pigskin picks. And I know we, we get uh, hung up with this sometimes, and it gets us in trouble, but we're going to start with the, the rookie on the staff. What do you think? Okay, I am the rookie, so uh, don't hold me to this. I may switch midseason, depending on how it goes. But uh, I look to see uh, Rancho finishing first, just for uh, the simple fact, the running game and the defense, followed closely by Pacifica and Los Amigos, Santiago right there in fourth place. Jeff? Gordon and Jeremy, here it goes. <laughs> Los Amigos, Pacifica, Rancho, all five and one. <laughs> the diplomat over here. Make a decision. Make it easy, sure. Los Amigos, one. And uh, Pacifica and Rancho, tied at second. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to have to go with uh, Pacifica. They return all that offense, and they just got so many things they can throw at you. Uh, they're going to have to go with Los Amigos. They really want it after last year's uh, close finish. And then Rancho and then Santiago. Always tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know we're, we're going to get in trouble out on, <laughs> out on the fields, but uh, that's how it looks. So, uh, well, that's going to wrap things up for Pigskin Preview 96. We hope you've enjoyed the program. And uh, we'll look forward to the season and hope to see you out at the games. So long. working the sidelines. He'll be doing it all game and all season for us. Jeremy Woods. Jeremy, what do you got for us? Thanks, Gordon. I appreciate the welcome back. I'm happy to be back here on the sidelines for the second year. Look forward to bringing you guys updates all year long. Let's get right to it. For Santiago, you touched on junior quarterback Ben Tran. Well, they have 24 seniors on the team this year, so this may be the year that they contend for the Garden Grove League title. One of those seniors, long snapper George Guzman, is the only injury to speak of. He stretched ligaments in his knee. He'll be in there tonight on long snaps for punts, extra points, and field goals. But you've got to keep an eye on him to see how that knee holds up. On the other side of the field, Rancho Alamitos, you heard about Alex Blanco and the injury he suffered. They still have a great running attack with Leo Cosi and David Vickers. They are outscoring their opponents 136 to 21 this year. That's an average of 45 to 7. They're doing it on both sides of the ball. The defense has taken the ball away from their opponents 10 times this year seven interceptions so when you talk about Rancho you talk about the whole package we'll have to watch and how see how this one turns out let's send it back upstairs to you guys thanks Jeremy thank you Jeremy uh, as you mentioned a potent offense so far displayed by the Rancho Alamitos Vaqueros and a deadly defense so far that's right Gordon you know and uh, you know we had a chance to talk to the uh, Santiago coaching staff before the game tonight and uh, their defensive philosoph philosophy is going to be uh, stop the run at all costs, and if we're going to lose, we're going to make them beat us with the pass. And uh, so I think you're going to see Santiago bring in eight, nine guys up front and trying to stuff up everything that Rancho can, uh, can offer as far as the running game goes. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy mentioned that uh, the, the average, if you break it down for Rancho, 45 points a game. Well, Santiago, uh, not too bad themselves. They've averaged 26 points a game, so they've had an offense that's uh, been working as well. Yeah, that's right, Gordon. I think that large part is due to the, the improvement and the development of Ben Tran, the quarterback. When your uh, passing game is uh, somewhat equal to your running game, that has to uh, keep the defenses honest, and uh, they complement each other and open up uh, the passing game, opens up the, the run, and, and vice versa. So, uh, you know, you're right, Santiago's uh, no slouch offensively either. And Ben Tran, uh, 289 yards in the air last week against a uh, defeat, actually, against Dana, Dana Hills. 
uh, but that was the second best in Orange County. So that's, that's he's right. still putting up the numbers, and I know that was a disappointing loss for them last week. They got down real quick in that game. Yeah, the coaches were from Santiago were disappointed, to, to say the least, Gordon. It, uh, you know, they kind of described it as a, as a down game for Santiago, you know, and uh, so one key tonight, obviously, is going to be if they get off to a quick start and, and maintain a uh, higher level of efficiency than they have over the last uh, seven or eight days. Yeah, Santiago, they've been uh, preparing especially hard this week uh, for trying to handle Leo Kosi because he's going to be the one that they're going to be keying on. And he also, uh, despite Alex Blanco going out last week in the game with that knee injury, Leo Kosi surely didn't let up. Four touchdowns last week, 269 yards. Yeah, you know, and Gordon, the, the, the key for, for Rancho, having uh, most teams that would lose a running back, the caliber of Alex Blanco, would really be uh, somewhat desperate. But Leo Kosi's the old man out there, so to speak. This is his third year as a starter, and uh, he's been through the... He's been through the wars, and, and so he's got that experience and that, that savvy that, uh, you know, he's not going to be shaken with one of his buddies down for a while. And, and, and also with Vickers back there, don't forget, he's only carried the ball 14 times. My goodness, he's averaged 13 and a half yards a carry. So, uh, you know, they, they drop off some, but not a whole bunch. I'm sure we'll see a lot of Leo Kosi tonight, that's for sure. Well, Santiago, the Cavaliers are set to kick off to the Rancho Alamitos Vaqueros. Adrian Villacano is the uh, kicker for the Santiago Cavaliers. Back deep for the Ranch Alamitos Vaqueros, Leo Kosi. We've uh, talked plenty about him. David Vickers and Mike Hanlon. And already, already, Jeff Butefe, the uh, a penalty has been assessed to the uh, Ranch Alamitos Vaqueros. Yeah, there was a delay of game, Gordon. They were slow getting their... Uh, kickoff return team out on the field so uh, this obviously would be an advantage to Santiago so Santiago kicks off at their 45 yard line and it lands in the hands of Leo Kosi Leo Kosi finds a hole and look out Leo Kosi has the kicker to beat Kosi on his way Leo Kosi 99 yards for the opening kickoff and the score well that's that's the one exciting way for the senior to begin his uh, last campaign in the Garden Grove League. And uh, Rancho had a middle wedge set up. And uh, once he busted through, he, all he had to beat was the kicker. And uh, when you put a lineman against the running back, chances are pretty good that you're going to sidestep or get around. And boy, I'll tell you, Leo, uh, you know, you just expect the unexpected from him this year, I'll tell you. And I'll tell you what, this is the last thing that the Santiago Cavaliers wanted to happen. They yeah. didn't want. You take a look at uh, Leo Kosi there. Yeah, you'll see him. He breaks the first uh, the wave there, and then all you see left is the kicker. And uh, when you put a running back on a, on a lineman, that's not fair. <laughs> Leo Kosi does the rest. And, and the extra point is good. Ranch Alamitos off to a 7-0 start with only 14 seconds gone in this game. Well, now that the Santiago Cavaliers, like you said, they're going to be put to the test. Uh, you know, not to, not to belabor a bad point about last week's game but the coaching staff from Santiago was disappointed last week and uh, obviously they can't be much happier with the way things have started now so this is going to be a character check for the Cavaliers you know they're going to have to come out and uh, not let that affect them and uh, get some offense going try to keep the ball away from Rancho with uh, uh, sustain a good drive of their own and if they can protect Ben Ben Tran if they can give him time to throw uh, and sustain a drive not only do they burn the clock Gordon, but they also uh, keep the hands, uh, keep the ball out of the hands of Rancho. The last year, of course, when these two teams met, it was almost uh, the exact same thing. You know, the Santiago came, they thought they were well prepared. Rancho jumped on them right away in the game, and they just couldn't come back. Yeah, it was over in the first quarter. So Rancho Alamitos kicks off. Frank Ortiz to Octavio Villa. Villa gets wrapped up at the 22-yard line. That's where Santiago Cavaliers will have a chance to fire up their offense. You know, this season, Gordon, uh, as we spoke earlier, Santiago's done a pretty good job of balancing out their offense. You know, uh, obviously with the development of Ben Tran, uh, the passing game has uh, really come on. So with Villa back there and uh, Carbajal, that's, uh, that complements Ben quite well. All right. Clock begins to run. Ben Tran under center. Tran hands it off. To number 23, Santiago. Ball 
actually that check that 33 Victor Martinez gets the ball for the Cavaliers and not much there as Martinez has uh, not gotten up yet. You know, Gordon, this is going to be a, a pretty good indication of, of uh, how Rancho's defense is going to do this well, depending on how well they can uh, protect their linebackers and, and get their linebackers reacting to the ball. I think the strength of the Rancho defense is going to be in their linebacking core with uh, Nua Tuatasi and David Vickers and, and Hanlon and that group. So they, they're quick and they're fast and they, they, they react really well. And... Uh, I think those linebackers are going to really help to carry uh, this team while they're waiting for uh, Blanco to get back. And uh, and there was a good indication there way uh, New stepped up, filled in, uh, stuffed, stuffed things before uh, Sandy Al could break the line of scrimmage. So hoping there's not uh, any more bad news for the Santiago Cavaliers. Victor Martinez, the ball carrier on that, and he's still being tended to on the field. 7 nothing Rancho Alamitos. Just 14 seconds into this game. And Victor Martinez still down. As you take a look at the uh, San Diego Cavaliers. The Cavaliers coached by uh, Ben Haley in his third year. What a, what a job he has done so far for this program. Yeah, you know, there's, uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, Coach Haley at San Diego, the, the pros and cons, but I'll tell you that... Uh, that, that coach over there, Ben Haley, has done a fantastic job. And, uh, you know, they've already won uh, more games with Coach Haley in the past two seasons than they'd won in the previous three before Coach Haley came on the scene over at Santiago. So uh, they're on their way up. You know, they're, they're headed in the right direction. And if they can just clear that last hurdle and win that uh, one more game, so to speak, that they've lacked in the last two seasons and get over that 500 mark, you're going to see the Cavs in the, uh, in the playoffs soon. Well, we'd like to uh, thank some sponsors that are going to be helping us out this year. Dairy Queen of West Garden Grove, located on uh, 12510 Valley View Street. That's in Garden Grove. Their phone number, 898-6488. And uh, that's hot eats and cool treats. And don't forget, they have a drive through You can uh, zoom through and pick up some uh, ice cream. And also, if ice cream is enough, how about some uh, Perry's Pizza? Perry's Pizza located on the west side of Garden Grove as well on 6937 West Chapman Avenue. They've done a great job of helping us out uh, during our game coverage over the last couple of years. Give them a call, 898-7670. And of course, West Grove Trophy. Uh, unbel uh, it's unbelievable that uh, we've been on the air eight years now with our broadcast, and West Grove Trophy has been along every one of those years providing our player of the game trophies, and uh, this year is no exception. We want to thank them again if you need, uh, have any trophy needs, 893-5708. We're set uh, back to action as Victor Martinez has been helped off the field for the Cavaliers. You noticed Teddy out came out a double wing on that first play, and now they're going to spread things out with single back. And Red uh, Excuse me, Gordon. Trying to spread out that Rancho defense a little bit. Flags went flying on that. Rancho Alamitos jumped off. And the Vaqueros called with a offsides penalty. Five yards on the penalty. Second down and six for Santiago. Carlos Carbajal in the backfield. The single back too wide for Santiago. Tran back to pass and thrown just to the backside, intended for number 24, Pedro Hernandez. Yeah, I think what we're going to see, Gordon, tonight from Santiago is uh, coming out in a lot of double tight end doubles, you know, double wide and a single back. And on that play, uh, Santiago is trying to uh, cross, their, cross, cross their receivers. You know, it's, uh, that's the toughest route for linebackers to try to cover is a receiver that's running across the field rather than up and down the field. And uh, unfortunately for Santiago, the ball is thrown a little bit behind. Steve Lopez out again. Same set for Santiago. Carlos Carbajal the backfield. In motion, Ray Martinez. Tran, back to pass. Hits his receiver, number 24. That's Pedro Hernandez, but that's going to be short of a first down. That's going to bring up fourth down for Santiago, and uh, 
not much going for them at all. Yeah, Sanio came out in the doubles again, Gordon with a single back and motion into a trips where they'd have uh, three receivers on the right side of the field and tried to flood that area. And David Vickers does a fantastic job of taking those backs coming out of the backfield and uh, stops them short. So Santiago's gonna have to give up the ball, which is what they did not want to have to do on their first drive. Adrian Villacana back to punt for Santiago from their 30 yard line. Villacano has to go get that one and almost blocked by Leo Kosi. Doesn't get off a very good one. That's gonna roll to the 48 yard line of Santiago. So Rancho Alamitos with their first official offensive possession will have great field position. Yeah, yeah unfortunately that uh, Santiago has lacked that uh, crisp execution and uh, special teams again is putting them in a hole. Uh, the kickoff team and now the uh, punt team. And uh, the last thing you wanna do is give Rancho Alamitos field position on your own side of the 50. So our first opportunity to see the quarterback for Retro Alamitos, that's Taylor Yandel in his first year at quarterback. He pitches to Kosi. Kosi, near side. Kosi looking for something, makes his way, creates a few holes and gets down to the 39-yard line of Santiago. Yeah, you mentioned, Gordon, about uh, Taylor Yandel, a quarterback. Uh, most of fans last year will remember he was a uh, wide receiver for the Vaqueros with John Frank back there as quarterback. And this year, with the graduation of John Frank, uh, Coach Case was uh, hard-pressed to come up with a quarterback, and uh, Taylor's come in and stepped in, and, and I think Coach Case and the staff's pretty pleased with the job he's been doing so far. You mentioned Coach Doug Case in his fourth year leading this Vaquero squad. Second down and one for Rancho. 9.35 left in this first quarter. Taylor Yandel scrambling to his right. Just off the mark of Nua Tuatasi, but great coverage there by Santiago. Steve Lopez. Yes, you know, talking to the coaching staff again from Santiago for the game, they're, they've been pretty pleased with the defensive play of Steve Lopez. Not only is he a fine receiver, but he also uh, covers that area back there, the defensive backfield real well. And they're really happy with the leadership that Steve uh, possesses and gives to the Cavaliers in that defensive backfield. And there was a good indication, as you said, Gordon. So again, third down and one for Rancho. Kosi will set up in the backfield, along with Frank Roberto. Pitch to Kosi. Kosi scrambles ahead, and that's a first down for Rancho. Yeah, Gordon, that was uh, similar to that uh, pitch power Rancho's been noted for in the past with, they, with that uh, stack die where they ran uh, three running backs stacked in the eye behind the quarterback, and they uh, pitch it to Leo, and uh, he gets up in behind those lead blockers with uh, Vickers and Hanlon and some of those kids back there, and they pave the way and it's enough for a first down. And again, you know what we talked about earlier, Gordon, when you give Rancho the ball, you can expect that they're gonna run, 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 not only gain yardage, but they're gonna eat the clock too. And so the defense is really gonna have to step up for Santiago. Set up again, this time Vickers. Vickers tries to go up the middle, but nothing is there for David Vickers. That's what you're going to have to see Santiago doing with their linebackers. They're going to have to uh, step up quick. You know, they're going to have to attack. They can't be sitting back on their heels waiting for Rancho to come to them. they got to go and get those backs before they can break that line of scrimmage. And again, we talked before the game about it. Santiago's philosophy is going to have to be, we're going to come with all we've got to stop the run. And if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to beat us by throwing the ball. No gain on the play for Rancho Alamitos. Clock running in the first quarter. Eight minutes, 20 seconds left. Two set up near side for Rancho. Taylor Yandel under center. Pitches it to Kosi and whistles blow and flags are flying. But yeah, there's an emotion call. Yeah, I think we had a little movement on the Rancho Alamitos line. A legal procedure against Rancho Alamitos, so they're going to march back five yards. Second down and 15, that brings up. You know, you talk about that line from Rancho Alamitos, the coach Case and, and the staff. Uh, are really happy with the development they've had. And they've been able to come up now with uh, 10 pretty quality linemen. In the past, the Rancho has been three or four, but now they can platoon and, and keep legs fresh. And uh, boy, that just adds the fuel to the fire for their for the uh, Rancho Alminos offense. Yandel, back to pass. Oh, just misses a wide open Nam win. 
Well, Taylor made the right read there. You know, he had uh, his receiver streaking up the seam and uh, just overshot. But, uh, you know, you can't fault him for, a, for misreading on that. That was, a, that was a, a good decision by Taylor. So third and 15 for Rancho Alamitos. Under eight minutes left in the first quarter. 48 minutes of football is what they play in high school. Third down 15, Rancho Alamitos with a seven to nothing lead on a 99 yard opening kickoff return by Leo Kosi. Kosi gets it again, but tripped up in the backfield, somehow stays on his feet. Finally swarmed on by every player on the Cavalier team, which is what they gotta do. Well, it's no secret, Gordon, that Rancho's gonna get the ball to Leo. And, uh, you know, we talked about earlier, Santiago's gonna have to come with the blitz package. They're gonna have to, uh, you know, pin their ears back and attack and, and get after him before they, because uh, if they let the Rancho Alamitos running back sit the line of scrimmage, it's uh, it's Katie bar the door because once they get past that that first wave, boy, they're awfully f they're hard to bring down. Steve Lopez back to receive the punt. It's Rancho Alamitos forced with a fourth down situation. The kick is off by Eric Camarino. Lopez takes it at his ten. Lopez scoots up to around the 18-yard line. You know, one thing, Gordon, I really liked about that with Steve Lopez was that uh, as a punt returner, it's really important that you uh, catch the ball. You don't let the ball hit the ground. And second of all, always try to get the ball advanced. And instead of calling for a fair catch, Steve uh, decided to go ahead and take it and get some yardage and try to get up feeling. He sidestepped uh, a couple of the Rancho defenders and did a really good job getting some yards for his, uh, for his offense. So Santiago, deep in their own territory. And another flag is thrown before the play begins. All right, while this penalty is marched off, let's go down to Jeremy Woods, who has an update on uh, the injured uh, Cavalier. Jeremy. I have an update on wide receiver Victor Martinez who got injured on the first play. He took the handoff and Nuatuatasi caught his ankle under Nuatuatasi's body, I should say, and when Nu rolled over, that's when the, the bad sprain occurred. The team doctor, Dr. Vivanco, says it is just a bad sprain, but he does not expect him to return. Back to you guys upstairs. All right, well, some good news for the Cavaliers there, but some bad news out on the field as they fumble the ball, and the Rancho Alamitos Vaqueros have taken over at the 23-yard line. So right now, the Vaqueros not having to work too hard. Well, I'll tell you, this has got to be disappointing to Sandy. It's been really sloppily played by them in this first quarter. And Mike Hanlon, who recovered that fumble, really reacted well and got his nose in on that football. Kosi gets it up the middle. Kosi follows his blockers. Leo Kosi up to around the 18-yard line. You know, that's one thing, Gordon, that the Rancho Alamitos uh, running backs have done really well over the past five, six, seven years. You know, they call it tailback high school. They get the running backs in behind those big linemen, and they just um, just march and pull their way through that defense. And uh, they've always had those running backs that with good balance and good strength. And uh, there's a, just an example of, uh, of that style of running that they've been able to do. And then they can bust it, too. So, uh, you know, it's a, du it's a double whammy. Second down and seven. The pitch back to Vickers. Vickers plows his way through the defense. Vickers down under the 10 yard line, down to around the eight. So Vickers uses that power. Yeah, that time Gordon, they lined up David in the tailback spot and pitched it to him. And uh, as we said earlier, he's, uh, he leads the Vaquero running backs in yards gained per carry. And uh, you can see David just getting up the middle quickly. He gets through and uh, falling forward for extra yards. I'll tell you one thing I really like about Vickers, too. Not only is he a good runner, but he's a devastating blocker. Oh, I'll tell you, he does a great job of blocking. Very unselfish. Great defense. And uh, Leo Kosi has the ball. Leo Kosi tries to scoot up the right side. Kosi, not much there on that one. Yeah. I, I don't Quavos. know if we'll get to see that again or not, but I'll tell you, Santiago's defense did a pretty good job of stringing things out. You know, they let Leo run sideways and uh, waited for the cavalry to get there and the pursuit caught up with him. And Santiago, again, they, they did a pretty good job of stringing out and not letting that Leo get squared up field and, and take off. 
Second down and six for Rancho Alamitos. Vickers in the backfield. Vickers gets the job up the middle. Vickers down to around the three-yard line. Yeah, it was strength against strength there. You know, they uh, pitch it and uh, play in the phone booth there. You know, they got about uh, seven on seven, and uh, David's so strong. And uh, you can see him again fighting and battling for every yard he can get down there. Four minutes, 50 seconds left in the first quarter. Seven to nothing. Wrench Alamito scoring in the first 14 seconds of this game on that 99-yard run back by Leo Cosi. And the Rancho Alamitos Vaqueros threatening again after San Diego fumbled in their own territory. Too wide for Rancho Alamitos. And movement. San Diego was moving on that, but I don't know if Rancho drew them off and wait for the call. You know, that was one thing Coach, uh, Coach Haley and his staff, Gordon, were... Uh, hoping for a better execution and discipline on Santiago's part tonight. So third down and one. Pitch to Kosi. Kosi plows up the middle and gets over the goal line. Touchdown Rancho. You know, that play was very similar to the one they ran a few plays back with David Vickers, only this one went over the left side of the line rather than right. And, uh, again, that's a little uh, pitch power, and uh, Cozy gets in behind those uh, offensive linemen, and they just pull their way. And now Santiago's really going to have to face an upward climb. And the extra point is good. 14 to nothing. The Vaqueros on top with four minutes and 17 seconds left in the first quarter. Rancho Alameda scoring on that one-yard touchdown by Leo Kosi, his second of the game. Leo Kosi already just in this fir first quarter, Jeff, uh, up around unofficially around 116 yards so far. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that uh, the way things are going now, that could uh, triple or quadruple before the night's over. Actually, that, that's... That's the Rancho team, but I, I would have to say a good majority of those is oh, belongs yeah. to Leo Cosi. Yeah. yeah, if I was Santiago, I'd uh, do everything within my power to make sure I don't kick the ball to Leo Cosi. I don't uh, do anything that I don't have to. Try to make it disappear, right? Get the ball. <laughs> Not much else you can do. Yeah. Camarillo kicks it off, and it rolls out of bounds, and it'll be marked. At around the 13-yard line is where the officials will mark it. And tonight's officials, go ahead and uh, give them some credit. They're the line judge, Dick Walters, Greg Ryland, the head linesman, Daryl Jones, the umpire, Jerry Kress, the referee, and Tom Wallum, the back judge. So all those guys out there in stripes keeping an eye on this game. Four minutes, 17 seconds. Illegal procedure is the call against the Vaqueros. So the Vaqueros stacking up the penalties so far in this game. Santiago needs to try to take advantage of that. Four minutes, 17 seconds. 14 nothing. The Vaqueros with the lead. Ben Tran back to pass. And great coverage there by number seven, Anthony Huizar of yep. Rancho. Yeah, Gordon, we talked about that earlier. I th again, the strength of the uh, defense for the Vaqueros this season has got to be in their linebacking core. And not only are they strong and fast and play the run well, but you notice they really react well to the pass. They, they make their drops and their reads real quickly, and they break on the ball exceptionally well. And uh, running backs that have to play against Rancho this year, they're not going to have an easy go whether they try to run the ball or try to catch it out of the backfield. Single back for Santiago, second down and 10. The give to Palacios. Palacios looking for somewhere to go outside. And he'll get a couple. Palacios ahead for two yards. Third down and eight for Santiago. Under four minutes to go in this first quarter. Yeah, notice right now, Gordon, Santiago is just trying to get a feel for what they can, what they think they can do now. They try to uh, 
play it tight with a double wing and they'll uh, spread things out in doubles with a single back and just trying to see what they might be able to attack on this uh, defense from Rancho where there's not very many soft spots. And they're going with the set again. Tran, under heavy pressure, has to get that one away. Not much he could do. And again, you know, uh, not to uh, belabor it, but uh, you got Mike Hanlon back there with uh, with Nua Tuatasi and Vickers, and, and you saw him running with the back, step for step, out of that backfield. And that's what those linebackers from Rancho can do. So Ben, Ben is really gonna have his work cut out for him. I think he's gonna have to start looking for those wide outs. So another down and out for uh, Santiago. Yeah, and David Vickers. That guy's yeah, unfortunately, Gordon, uh, Santiago's playing right into Rancho's hands right now with three plays and having to give it up. Santiago's gonna have to reach deep already early into this game. Villacano getting a lot of work back there, kicking that ball. Nice punt, though. David Vickers at his 23. Vickers looking for a hole. Vickers still on his feet. They forgot about David Vickers. Villacano again has to stop him, and finally, Vickers still on his feet. Somehow picks up some blockers. It's going to be brought down around the six-yard line. And a flag is thrown at the end of that play. Yeah, there might have been a little extra activity going on there after the whistle, but I'll tell you, when that ball was punted, you could see Rancho setting up that picket on their side of the sideline, and uh, Vickers did a good job of getting around it. There was a couple of devastating blocks we might be able to see if we, if we get the replay on that, Gordon. Well, I tell you, you know, we have... We have the ability to do slow-mo. With that play, it <laughs> regular motion looked like slow-mo. I mean, Vickers was just taking his time, picking up blockers, yeah. and kind of mowing his way downfield. Yeah. Yeah, here's the, here's the punt, Gordon, and uh, pretty good punt. But David does a good job of capturing the football. And right about now is... Uh, where, you know, you can start to tell, you know, if you're at the at the stadium, you can start to tell where the pickup picket is being set on the Rancho sideline. And uh, David's getting a good job now. He's getting a, a, getting a good little uh, angle to get in behind his uh, his picket. Uh, this is a game. Uh, this is a touchdown. And in the meantime, uh, Rancho Alamito's not doing too much different other than uh, scoring another touchdown. So Rancho Alamitos with their kicking game and their ability to return kicks like they've been able to do so far tonight has uh, let their offense, uh, hasn't, hasn't been too difficult for them. No, and I'll tell you, Gordon, Rancho special teams are going to get a good workout tonight. You know, their kickoff team and their uh, extra point team. And now Santiago's showing some fire there. They come out and block the extra point. 20 to nothing. Rancho Alamitos, three minutes and uh, a second left in this first quarter. Santiago looking for something. And it's definitely, uh, it's no surprise they need to get something going quickly. Yeah, you know, Gordon, it's, uh, they're almost put in a position now where they're going to uh, be desperate rather than trying to, uh, you know, e execute a, a game plan. I, I, I think now they're going to have to... Uh, you know, maybe look for a big play rather than a sustained drive. And, uh, you know, the three three plays and punting, like we said earlier. Um, hey, see Coach Ben Haley hands. showing a little frustration there, talking to one of the referees. Yeah. I think Coach Haley's still upset with that uh, last punt return that Rancho had set up. I think he felt that a couple of those blocks were, uh, were clips. Still discussing with him as Rancho Alamitos set to kick off. Again, Jose Palacios back for Santiago. Coach Ben Haley trying to get something going here. And obviously, like I said, it's got to be a little frustration on his part, but not too happy with the officials. He's looking for uh, anything at this point. Steve Lopez joins Jose Palacios for the kickoff return for the Cavaliers. And Eric Camarillo. Set to boot it away for Rancho as they have a comfortable 20 nothing lead. That's a Frank Ortiz on the kickoff. And the flag flies and uh, once again, both teams try to sort things out. You, know, Gordon, you mentioned earlier, excuse me, you mentioned earlier about Eric Camarillo. He's the uh, 
young junior that transferred over from Garden Grove High School. And uh, not only does he uh, do a lot of the punting chores and kicking chores for a rancher, like you said, but he adds a lot of uh, depth and experience at that linebacking situation. And uh, that might allow him to do a few more things while they're waiting for uh, Alex Blanco to heal, too, because uh, not only does Alex run the ball well, but he's a, he's a, a tremendous defensive football player, too. So his, uh, his absence is felt on both sides of the football. Three minutes and uh, a second left in the first quarter. 20 to nothing. Rancho Alamitos as uh, Santiago gets the start at the 45-yard line. As the officials uh, stand out there and trying to decide Maybe there was a, a flag on the kickoff and against Rancho Alamitos, and there's a discussion whether or not they marched up enough yards, and apparently not. So this first quarter has taken about four quarters so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I, I, if, if, if you're Santiago, um, you got to get something going. you got to get a drive more than, more than just three plays. You need, you need to eat some clock and uh, Tran, a quick one underneath to number 24, Pedro Hernandez and those are the kind of things they're going to have to start yeah. using right now is those quick underneath short right. passes, whatever's right. going to work and that's uh, yeah, four their first completion. All they need is four yards to play like they're getting right there. Four yards will do it, you know, and uh, they have to stay composed because if they go bonkers now, uh, all heck will break loose on them, but if they, 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 if they feel that they can uh, run the ball and and, and pass it, then they stick with it and, and give it a try. It's still the first quarter. Second down and six. Two minutes, 20 seconds left in the first quarter. 20 nothing. Rancho on top. Ben Tran, the drop. Underneath again, completed to Steve Lopez. Steve Lopez for the first down. Yeah, again, Ben did a good job of, of, of looking, the, looking over.